um, my name is Thomas. I'm the engineer from Neuzeit Instruments. And today I'm going to show you the Warp, our new module, which is an additive slash wavetable synthesizer. It's a whole synthesizer voice on its own. It can also be used as an oscillator. Um, yeah, it has a, t a ton of features. Um, it, you can dive very deep into the module. It, it has this big OLED screen and encoders where you can go really, really deep into detail and shape your own sounds. But you also have these uh, big performance knobs on the sides. So uh, these are all macro knobs and you can uh, use it as a really performative tool and forget about all the menu diving and just play around with it. One main element of the warp is this big LED screen here on top, which is an XY matrix. And it's basically a matrix of 32 by 16 wavetables, so to speak. Um, so with other wavetable synthesizers, you might be familiar with the concept that you can decide from where in the wavetable you want to derive uh, your timbre from. And it's the same here. So uh, Warp has four voices. Every, vo every dot here on the matrix represents one voice. And when I turn off uh, three of the four voices, we have only one dot left. And I can derive the sound from it. So one of the very coolest features of Warp is that it has an integrated editor where you can draw in a very intuitive way your own wavetables or your own frequency spectra in this XY space. So when I go down here to the XY paint menu, for instance, there are a couple modes in which you can paint. So I choose a simple mode. So I can use um, the green cursor here as a, a brush from where I pick a spectrum. So I can choose, okay, I want to start with this one. I pick like a sine wave. Um, then I drag this over here and set like my brush size uh, with these knobs. And now I start, oops, now I start um, painting. I can go in the menu here and then I'll draw my own harmonic content here with these encoders. For instance, not, uh, I can say I only want to have the fifth. And then enhance or lower them. Hear how they sound in context. And build a really complex spectra here. And so that way I can already see if I have a wavetable that I enjoy to listen in both directions. And once I'm happy, I just hit apply and it bakes in what we just draw into the spectrum. Um, there's also the possibility uh, to load entire files. So for instance, when you have already a wavetable synth, and this wavetable synth has, yeah, these files basically always look the same. They're like uh, 1,024 samples after each other with one wavetable after the other. I can import these kind of files. Um, so now the green line is the wavetable file that I imported. And I can listen to it, also preview it here, and then also set the position of this file. So I can put this a little higher on the grid. I can bake that in, uh, or I can also just derive a small grain from a file. So for example, when I have like a piano sound, I can try and capture that taste of the piano sound. Also then alter this frequency spectrum and also bake and apply these sounds. So these are the ways where I can paint uh, my spectrum. And the fun starts 
um, when I go into the effects, then I can add some like spectral effects. For instance, like this comp filter. And also change uh, the impact. So this is applied onto the frequency spectrum before warp generates a wavetable from that frequency spectrum. This is the frequency domain, so we also have wavetable effects that can be applied behind the wavetable, such as, for example, um, a wave folder or a PWM band or a bit reduction. So we can have a range from these very glassy sounds up to these edgy, gnarly sounds. And there are also regular um, normal high pass, low pass filter behind that can also be mapped to these macro knobs so that I can tame the sound a little bit. Get a wide variety. So when I also dial in the voices, there is also a detune knob. And with four voices, they can have different pitches, different stereo panning. You can see that we get a huge variety. They also have something like oscillator sync or an analog voice drift emulation, quantization of course. And there's also a very big internal modulation matrix. So we have an ADSR that is entirely for the volume. We have a separate ADSR that can be routed to everything. Then there are two LFOs with a whole variety of shapes to choose from. Uh, you can set the speed. And then there is a very big modulation matrix where you can practically route everything to everything. Um, and to make this all still controllable, we have these two knobs here that set the speed and the modulation depth. So once I'm all set, I can practically forget about it and then just play the instrument pretty much blindly. Um, I can also recall and store presets and one fun part is uh, that even the preset files they are actually WAV files or dot .wav files so I can import and export these with and from other uh, wavetable synthesizers so there's a lot of uh, interchangeability between these formats so you can basically use Warp as an editor uh, for wavetables that can be used in other wavetable synths and vice versa. When I export a wavetable, I can also set uh, the format, the length of the wavetable, uh, the bit depth, I can set a name for uh, the preset or for the wavetable. There's this little alphabet view here. And there's an SD card and you can easily interchange uh, everything that you created with the outside world. Um, to play this polyphonic, uh, there's also gonna be an expander module uh, that has MIDI in and MIDI through. And uh, for triggers and uh, volt per octave inputs, so they can really play it as a true polyphonic voice again. Okay, uh, Warp will be available in September of this year and the expander probably a little later. Yeah, I think that's these are the most important things that we covered so far. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching.